In this video, I'm going to show you some basics on how to graph with the TI-84 calculator and how to find some of the relevant points on your graph. So the first thing you need to know is how to input a function to graph, and that's what this button right here is for. All right, y equals. So you'll see you've got a possibility of up to seven functions that you can input at one time. I'm just gonna put in one. All right, so to input the function, right here is your variable key. So I'm going to put in x to the third minus 25x. So there's the function input. Now when you input a function, you graph it in a window. So the default window for the calculator is negative 10 to 10 on the x and negative 10 to 10 on the y. This input right here is just where your tick marks appear. So this means one tick mark every one unit. All right, now I'm just going to graph it and see what happens. And notice that a lot of the graph is appearing off the screen. So this goes up and it looks like it goes quite a bit up here and it looks like it goes quite a bit down here. So I would like to change my window so that I can see the parts of the graph that I'm missing. So I'm going to go over here to window. I'm going to change it manually. I think the X is good. So I'm going to come down here to the Y, and let's see what happens if we change the Y to negative 50 to 50. And I'm going to hit graph again. Okay, that's better. It is going right to the top and right to the bottom of the graph, so I'll probably have to adjust that again later, but for right now, this is good. And I can see the interesting part of the graph. Again, the rest of this just goes up to positive infinity and down to negative infinity that way. So one of the first things I can notice about this is there's three places where this graph crosses the x-axis, which means this function has three real roots or real zeros. I would like to find them. So anytime you want to do any kind of calculation like this with a graph, there's a menu right here that says calc. So I'm going to go second, calc, and I have some options. I can find a value. I can find a zero, I can find a minimum, a maximum, and if I have two functions graphed, I can find the intersection point of the two graphs. So I want to find a zero. So I'm just going to tab down. I can either tab down and highlight two, or I can come down here and click on two. Right, and what you see, the first thing you see here is I've got a blinky cursor sitting on the graph. So what I want to do is bound the zero. So let's say I'm going to find the zero right here. So I want to make a left bound and a right bound. So I'm going to move the cursor. I have to do this one click at a time. If you're working on a physical calculator, you can just hold the button down. Uh, I have to take steps. All right, so the left side of the zero happens to be below the curve. So I'm going to move below the curve. You can stay closer if you want. I'm just, this is, I'm just moving further away for emphasis here. So I'm going to hit enter, and I get, notice, I get this little triangle up here. If you have a newer calculator, you'll actually get a vertical line uh, showing up as your left bound. But that's indicating the left bound. Now I need the right bound. So I'm going to move to the other side. Now I'm on the right of the zero. Hit enter, and I get another little triangle, or again, if you have a newer calculator, a vertical line and the zero is between these two. So the next thing it's asking for is a guess, and the guess is it just wants you to get between the two. Yeah, I'm either above or below, okay. A, you want to get between the two uh, bounds, and then hit enter, and it will navigate itself to the actual zero. All right, so in this case, the zero happens at x equals negative five. All right, so you find the other two zeros for this function the same way. Now, if I want to do anything else, if I want to do another calculation, I have to clear this calculation first, even if I want to go and find another zero. Okay, so I have to clear the calculation. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is this function has a, a local maximum and a local minimum. So I'd like to find, let's say we want to find the local maximum. But it's sitting right at the top of the screen. That's going to make it a little tricky to work with. So I'm just going to come down here, and I'm going to move this, let's say, negative 70 to 70. Right. 
right, so we're going to graph that again. Notice now it's a little bit lower, so it's going to be a little bit easier for me to work with. All right, so I'm going to go back into the calc menu. And maximum is down here at 4, so this time I will tap 4. All right, so I want this point, so I get that blinky cursor again, and again it's asking me for a left bound, just like for the zeros. So I'm going to move my cursor so that I am to the left of that maximum point. And I'll, I'll move a little distance away. And I'm going to hit Enter. All right, so I get that little triangle again. Now it wants the right bound, so I'm going to move to the right. And I'm going to hit enter, so I get another triangle. So now I have the bound, and notice the maximum point is between the two bounds. It's asking me for a guess, so I'm going to move in between the two and get close. And I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so now I have the maximum point highlighted. All right, the maximum is approximately the x-coordinate is approximately negative 2.89, and the y-coordinate is approximately 48.11. Right, so I have the maximum. I can find the minimum the same way by clicking minimum. I have to clear first. Okay, I'm not going to do it, but you can. I'll leave that for someone to play with. Um, so I can find the zeros. I can find the local maximums and minimums. Uh, let's look at intersection points. So let's say... Let's say this was an equation that I wanted to solve, and suppose it was x to the third minus 25x equals 10. All right, so what I can do is I can whoop, what I can do is I can put the 10, the other side of the equation, in as its own function. And now when I graph, notice I have three places where the graphs cross. So those three places are the three real solutions to the equation x to the third minus 25x equals 10. So let's find one of them. All right, so I'm going to go into calc again. This time I'm going to go to intersect, which is 5. Now this one's a little different because you're not going to bound it. What it wants you to do is to get close. All right, so let's say we're going to find this intersection point right here. All right, I'm sitting on I'm sitting on the cube, so I'm gonna move my cursor as close to that intersection point as I can get it. All right, so I think I'm gonna stay above it. All right, so what we've done is we've moved the cursor as close to the intersection point on the first curve as I can get it. When I hit enter, it's gonna jump to the second curve, but it's already really close, so I don't need to move it. All right, so that's the point I'm gonna choose for the second curve. Now it wants a guess, but again, it's already really close to the point, so I'm just going to use that as my guess. I'm going to hit enter, and it pops out the intersection point, negative 4.78, well, approximately negative 4.79, and the y-coordinate is 10. All right, so you can find intersection points that way also. All right, so in this calc menu, you can use it to find your zeros, you can use it to find your local minimums and maximums, and you can use it to find the intersection points of any of your uh, functions that you have entered in. All right, so the last thing I want to be able to do is put everything back to basically reset everything. All right, so removing the functions is easy. You just go into where the function is and hit clear and hit clear. All right, so now my function's empty. I'd like to get my window back to negative 10 to 10. It wouldn't be hard for me to just retype that, but if I had used uh, over here in the zoom menu, right, there's other ways to change your window. I could zoom in, zoom out, do a box zoom. Um, if I go to the very last thing in the list, zoom fit, which pulls the interesting part of your graph onto the screen. Now, it's not always the best way to, it's not always the best window to look at. Uh, these could be all wild numbers. So a quick way to do this is to go into zoom, and right here where it says Z standard, zoom standard, that's number six, that drops your window back to negative 10 to 10, just from wherever it is. All right, so we've got everything reset, and you should be good for graphing.